an illustration. So the example reads that a company manufactures two types of products. X and Y. Which cost shillings 10 and shillings 15 per unit respectively. There is a budget constraint of shillings 850. And the profit function is given as pi equal to 60x plus 150y minus x squared minus 3y squared. Required, determine the number of units for each product that should be produced and sold in order to maximize profit. Now, we are having the following. This is the illustration. You are having the following. We are having the function x, which is our profit this time. So this one is pi equals to, pi equals to, uh, we are given 60x uh, plus, uh, 60x plus 150y, 150y minus x squared minus 3y squared. x squared minus 3y squared, exactly. Aha. Uh -huh. <clears throat> then we also have the constraint, the budget constraint. So this is a, a gx. So gx is the constraint which you are being given that uh, we have um, the uh, 10 shillings per unit of x and 15 shillings per unit of uh, y, which should not uh, go beyond uh, 850. So we have, um, this is 10x plus 15y should equal to 850. But remember we said that uh, this linear constraint you must give it in this form of uh, equal to zero. That means we need to transfer this 850 on the left hand side. So you can see that uh, that is 10x plus 15y minus 850 equals to zero. So that now, these two functions, we can now connect them, these two. The fx and the gx using uh, that uh, multiplier. So you can have there that, uh, therefore, the step one, Langridgean function equals to fx minus the lambda, then uh, gx, which is L equals to, the function x is this profit, which is uh, 60x plus 150y minus x squared minus 3y squared, then minus, we have the lambda or the multiplier, multiplied by this gx, which is here. This is 10x plus 15y minus 850. That's what we have. So now we have uh, fx and we have uh, the gx and we have the multiplier uh, uh, there. So we can uh, work out, open the bracket and then see whether they have any like terms together. So we can have it as, as L equals to 60x plus 150y minus x squared minus 3y squared minus 10x multiplier minus 15y uh, multiplier then plus 850 multiply. I hope you have no problem with that because I have just opened the bracket and the negative sign outside the bracket is of course having an effect. This is minus, so it becomes minus 10x multiplier minus, because mi minus 15y uh, multiplier and this is a minus. Minus and minus become positive and therefore it's plus 850 uh, multiplier. So there's no like term together here, no like term together. So we just need to actually go to the second order condition. So we say that, um, uh, not second, but first, sorry. Our first order condition, which is our next step. We say that um, uh, derivative, derivative of Langridgean with respect to x shall be, let's now do the partial differentiation. This is going to be 60. Uh -huh. This, there is no x here, we leave it. There's an x here which is going to be minus 2x. There's no x here, we leave it. There's an x here which is going to be power 1. So it becomes minus 10 uh, uh, multiplier. x disappears because those are power 1. There's no x here, there's no x here. Therefore, that is all. So this one equals to 0 as we have said that um, when we differentiate that way, the first order condition equals to 0. Then the next one is the dl with respect to uh, respect to y. 
with respect to y. This is going to be, uh, there is no uh, y, there is no y here. This is uh, dl, which is uh, Langragian. There is no y, we leave it. There is a y here, so it's going to be 150. Uh -huh. There is no y here, we leave it. There is a y here, it's going to be minus 6. y, minus 6y. There is, a, there is no y here, but there is a y here. So it's going to be 1 times 15 becomes minus 15, uh, the multiplier. No y here. So therefore, our answer equals to 0. That is now the two uh, functions. Now, the last one. The last one is when we differentiate with respect to the multiplier. We differentiate with respect to the multiplier. We'll have it this way. So derivative of the Langragian with respect to the multiplier equals to, we have no multiplier here, no multiplier, no multiplier, no multiplier for the first four. So therefore, there is nothing to integrate, to differentiate there. So it's going to be zero. But there is a multiplier here, which is going to be, this is a power one. So power one becomes minus uh, 10x. So this is minus 10x. There is a power one here, so becomes minus 15y. So minus 15y. And then there is uh, a power one here, which is going to be 850, so plus 850. So this is going to be zero. Now you see that uh, we have three equations. Now this equation has x and multiplier. This one has y and uh, multiplier. This one has x and y. So none of the three equations is like any other. Uh, and therefore, we can only use uh, the uh, method of uh, substitution. So we substitute, we can make maybe x the subject, we come and substitute here, that we can remove that x. So we can do that un until we are able to uh, make, uh, to, to get um, uh, the values of x, y and the multiplier. So you can have, so using substitution, method. So remember these are now simultaneous equations. So we are going to have uh, 60 minus 2x minus 10 uh, multiplier equals to 0. So you're going to have um, uh, 60 minus 10 multiplier equals to 2x. What I've done I've just transferred my negative 2x on the other side to become positive. So I'm having my 60 and my negative 10 multiplier. So I can now divide both sides by x, so I can have my, uh, by 2, sorry, I can have my x equals to 30 minus 5 multiplier. So this is what I'm going to use to substitute in this equation here. So at least I can have the multiplier and I have the y. Remember. I cannot substitute the second one because there's no x. I want the one that has an x. And by so doing, I have removed x and uh, introduced multiplier, and there's a y, so which is now going to be the same as the second. So you can have here that uh, therefore, uh, minus 10x minus 15y plus 850 equals to zero. So you can have here minus 10 in bracket, 30 minus five multiplier, then minus 15y plus 850 equals to 0. So we can have like terms together. This is minus 300 minus, uh, this is minus 10 times minus 5 is plus 50 multiplier. Minus 10 times minus uh, 5, that's going to be positive 50 multiplier. Then I'm having minus 15y plus 850 equals to 0. Then like terms together, I can arrange it so that at least uh, it is the same as this one. So I can have uh, my multiplier and y on this side. So I can have them as 50 multiplier minus 15y equals to. I am having this is minus 800 minus 300 plus 850. That's going to be uh, to be positive uh, 550. 550, if you transfer the other side, become minus 550. It is a positive 550 
transfer the other side become a minus 550. This one can be equation 1 and we bring this equation here and we arrange it in a manner that is going to, uh, we can use it to, sub to, to subtract. So I can start with the multiplier. So this one I start with a minus 15, minus 15 multiplier. Then I have um, minus 6y. I transfer my 150 the other side, which is going to be minus, so minus 150. So this is our Roman 2 equation. So that now I can even now use the method of elimination. So once I have arranged them that way, I can now be able to use the method of elimination and I can eliminate uh, any of these two. So it can be easy for us to eliminate maybe uh, the multiplier. Uh, should we take, I told you that we, you normally take the highest, you divide it by the smallest, let's see. If we take 50 divided by 15, uh, well, it is uh, repetitive in nature, as in uh, it is repetitive. And then 15 divided by 6 is uh, 2.5. In fact, this is easier. So if I multiply this second one by 2.5, then I'll have made my 6. I'll have made it uh, 15. And because we have the same signs, minus, minus, so we just need to subtract. Whenever you have the same sign, whether they are minuses or they are positives, you just need to subtract to, to eliminate that uh, uh, variable. So when I take 50 and I subtract in brackets, I am subtracting a 2.5 times a minus 15. This is 87.5. Multiplier. Remember that that I have some. I'm subtracting because these two, they have the same sign. So therefore, uh, I'll use the subtraction. But if the, it was this one I'm eliminating, having different signs means you need to add. Hope that is clear. So this one, of course, will be a plus zero, then equals two. I am having a minus five fifty. I subtract in bracket a two point five times a minus one fifty. This is giving us a minus 175. Meaning, when it comes to this multiplier, so it's going to give us minus 175 divided by 87.5, which approximately is minus what? So divide by 87.5. This approximately 2, so minus 2. That is the answer. So you're having minus 2 there. Now, once you have that, you can go backwards and you can substitute x because you see x was a subject of what? Of the multiplier. So you can have that x equals to 30 minus 5 in bracket minus 2. So this, of course, is going to give us 30 plus 10. 30 uh, plus 10 because it's minus minus. So plus 10, this is 40. That is 40 units of the first product then we can go to y so y we can go to any like now uh, any of the any of the three uh, equations as long as it has an y the only one we cannot use uh, is equation one because it doesn't have a y but this one has a y this one has a y in fact it is this equation that we used here we can uh, substitute and get uh, the y so if i take um, uh, like this one, I'll take uh, 50, 50, uh, this is, uh, uh, this is multiplier, multiplier is minus 2, so in bracket minus 2, and then I subtract 15y equals to minus 550, so my y, if I work out, will give me what? My y. So if I take 50 times minus 2, this is, of course, minus 100. I transfer the other sides to be a positive. So that means I'll be having minus 550. I add 100. I'll have minus 450. I divide by minus 15. So divide by minus 15. My answer is 30. So this is 30 units. So we have these uh, three as the, uh, the answers. That we have... Um, the multiplier is 2, we have uh, the x is 40 units, 
and the Y is actually 30 units. That tells you that uh, those are the units that you should produce and actually be able to uh, maximize the profit. Now the question is, what is the maximum profit and is it true that uh, these are maximizing? Of course, we did the second order, order condition with you. And you remember, if like you were to look at this one, the second time, if you were to differentiate this one the second time, with respect to x, we only get a minus 2. That means if the answer is minus 2, then these 40 units of x are being, uh, being maximized, or they are, maximum, they are maximizing our profit. If I go to y, if I uh, differentiate this the second time with respect to y, so the answer will be minus 6. The rest will be 0. So therefore, being minus, that means that, that units actually are uh, maximizing. And that's what we mean by second order condition. But all in all, what, uh, I've answered the question, but what is the profit? The profit, you just go back to this one, you substitute. You say pi equals to 60 in bracket 40, x is 40, then plus 150, y is um y is 30 then minus uh, 40 squared minus 3 in bracket 30 squared so i'm just substituting so this is i'm substituting here but at least i can get uh, what profit that is now <coughs> If I substitute, I'll have 60 times that, uh, times 40, which is x, plus 150 multiplied by 30, which is y, then minus 40 squared minus 3 times 30 squared. This is giving us an amount of 2,600. 2,600. Now, uh, one thing I would want to spot is about um, the economic meaning. The economic meaning of this multiplier. Because we have found the multiplier to be negative 2, then of course it's like saying that um, anytime you, you produce, if we produce more than uh, what uh, we have indicated here, 30 and uh, 40 and uh, 30 units, then our profit shall be affected by uh, two times what we produce. So this multiplies is two. So our, our profit, which is our response or either the main function, shall be affected uh, by two times what we actually produce uh, uh, because we're having a budget. That is actually the position. And we're able now to uh, uh, do the calculus whenever we are having some restriction. That is constraint optimization so we've come to the end of um, calculus and actually the end of the topic so the topic was uh, the mathematical techniques it was a lengthy topic a lengthy topic from functions up to now uh, calculus and uh, that is uh, all so uh, from me i wish you all the best as you do your revision Please do more exercise, read more, because it is when you do more exercise that you're able to uh, understand this. It is not a bad topic, but it has a lot of, um, a lot of um, difficulties that would require you to work more, to do more exercise. You cannot just do one exercise and that's all. You have to attempt so many, many questions. So in your past papers, uh, you have so many questions that you can try. And also you can check from our um, uh, study text as well as the the revision partners we have done several questions so with that uh, sure you are going to be better off and you are going to be fit as far as the uh, techniques or mathematical techniques are concerned so i wish you the best and goodbye for now thank you thank you for watching this video don't forget to get yourself a copy of our professionally prepared study text and revision partners. 
Visit our shop along Tomboya Street, Pioneer House, third floor, opposite fire station.